Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, my name is Kathy and I'm going to be uh, guiding you through a gentle breath centered yoga practice and you might want to grab some things to assist you. I mean, if you've got a yoga mat, that's great and you really don't need one. You could use a blanket or a beach towel or something like that to sit on or to rest your hands and knees on when we get to that place. You might also want to sit up on something to elevate your hips. I'm sitting on a folded blanket and, and that might be enough. It's just nice to have the hips elevated because then your back can be a little straighter and it just uh, makes for some more ease in the body. All right. So once you're ready and if you need to, you can turn your uh, uh, camera off for a second, get your stuff and then come back and turn it back on and then we'll start. So you may wish to rest your hands somewhere on your legs. You could sit cross-legged like I am. You don't need to sit cross-legged. If it's more comfortable to sit with your feet in a butterfly pose, that's just fine. Uh, the most important thing is for you to be able to be at ease as much as you can. What we'll be focusing on today is just finding um, ease in the body, in the mind, and uh, building some skills in regulating our autonomic nervous systems. So some of the ways we could start that is just by resting your hands somewhere on your legs or in your lap. I like to have my palms down. This is nice for some grounding, uh, just to feel like you're really settled in place. You are welcome to close your eyes at any time during this practice if you wish to. And you can also keep your eyes wide open or uh, just take a, a soft gaze, maybe looking down. And then we'll start with just some rocking movements. So rocking from side to side, just feeling the shift of your weight from one hip or one sitting bone to the other. This movement can have the effect of helping us to really land in the present moment. And uh, some people say that this is a great way of um, recalibrating your autonomic nervous system. So just a little bit more rocking from side to side. And then if you would like to, you could start to make some circles with your torso around your hips. So some gentle circular movements. As we do this, you might feel some sensations in the low back, in the hip flexors, maybe even in the low abdomen. Just starting to warm up the lower Part of your body. And then if you wish to, you could switch the direction of your circles. And just noticing what it feels like to move. When you feel complete with the circular movements, you could come back to sitting in stillness with an upright spine. Just taking a moment to notice how you're feeling right now. And then you might wanna take three cleansing breaths, inhaling through your nose, and then exhaling either through your mouth or your nose. couple more times like that. And then coming back to your natural breath in and out your nose. Maybe noticing the effects of taking three long deep breaths. So as we start to breathe more deeply, especially as we exhale a little more deeply than we inhale, we start to engage our parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part of our autonomic nervous system that sends a signal to our whole organism that it's okay to be 
relaxed or just a little bit less vigilant. Helps the whole system to calm down. So you'll hear me inviting you to take long deep breaths as we practice together today. And then when you're ready, you might inhale, reach your arms out to your sides and up over your head. Maybe your hands touch, they don't have to. And then as you exhale, bringing your hands together at your heart. We could do this two more times. Inhale, reaching out and up, really stretching through the sides and even into your armpits. And then exhale, hands to your heart. And one more time. Inhale, reaching the arms out and up. And then exhaling, hands to your heart. And letting your hands rest again, you might start to roll your shoulders a few times. So many of us hold a lot of tension in our shoulders and in our necks. Sometimes this can contribute to headaches. And so it's a, a good idea just to move through the shoulders a little bit every day. This is one way that you could do it. Maybe you choose to roll your shoulders up and back the way I am right now, but you might prefer up and forward to start. You might prefer rolling one shoulder and then the other, or maybe you like to do both at the same time. Really, this is about whatever feels right for you. And then if you wish to, you could change the direction of your shoulder rolls. And then let your shoulders come back to stillness. So now moving through the neck a bit, you could tilt your head to the right. Just let your right ear drift in the direction of your right shoulder. And taking a few intentional breaths here and perhaps noticing a stretching sensation in the left side of your neck. If you want to, you could gently relax your face and your jaw area. A few more breaths here, just giving the neck a little bit of time to soften. And then as you're ready, you could uh, just drop your chin down and then across your chest, now taking your left ear over your left shoulder. And again, think about the face softening, muscles around the eyes and the mouth. Breathing deeply, maybe even imagining that you're breathing into the right side of your neck, just softening that area a little bit more. And as you're ready, you could drop the chin down and across your chest again. Right ear comes over right shoulder. You might linger there if you like, or you could go directly to the other side. Just gently swaying your head, your chin from side to side. As if you were making a half smile with your chin. You could choose to stay with this movement side to side, or if you prefer, you could make some complete circles, taking your time as you do this, really feeling into all the subtle places in your neck. And if you chose to circle, you might wish to take a few in the other direction. And then the next time your chin comes down towards the middle of your chest, let it stay there for an extra breath or two. Just tucking the chin in towards the chest Take a few breaths here. You're lengthening through the back of the neck. You might feel some 
sensation not only in the neck but in that space between the shoulders. And here we're also harnessing our internal energy. So just a couple more breaths here. And then as you're ready, you could lift your gaze so that you're just looking straight ahead again. Let's go ahead and stretch our legs out long. You've been sitting there for a while. So just to release the legs a little bit, you might want to make some circles with your feet. I like to circle my feet out as if they were mirroring each other, but you could also circle your feet, both feet in the same direction. So whatever feels better for your feet and your ankles. We have this substance called synovial fluid in all of our joints. So moving through the joints really uh, lubricates the joints, helps them to stay healthy and happy. And then you could change the direction of your circles. And then you might want to flex and point your feet a few times, just spreading through your toes as you flex and then pointing the toes down. And just notice what it feels to move through your legs. Good. And then we could leave the legs out straight for a moment. We could interlace our fingers right in front of us and then press our palms straight ahead just to stretch through the outer arms, through the wrists and the hands. And if you want to, you could inhale the arms up just as high as feels comfortable for you. Take a couple of extra breaths here. And then just release your hands down by your side. Let's cross the legs again, just for a little bit. And you might wanna bring the opposite foot in front. And uh, we'll start to just rock forward and back, just um, a few times, just to uh, feel some ease in the low back and in the low belly. So this is more like a pelvic tilt just in the low part of the belly and back. And then come back to stillness. On the next inhale, you might reach your arms out to the sides and up overhead again. But this time as you exhale, you could bring your left hand down to the ground and reach the right arm up and over. And taking a few breaths here, and imagine that you're breathing directly into your right side, expanding through the lung and the rib cage and through all the connective tissue, the fascia that uh, surrounds and protects the muscles, bones, internal organs. On the next inhale, you could come back up, both hands might come overhead. And on the exhale, you could take that lateral stretch to the other side. Pressing down into the right hand, down into the left hip, expanding through the whole left side. A few more breaths here. And then on your inhale, let's come back up, both hands overhead, and then exhale your hands to your heart. Releasing the hands down to the legs. Now we're going to take a, a spinal twist. So you could turn your torso to the right, bringing your right hand on the ground behind you, and your left hand could come to either one of your legs or it might come to your ankle. You're looking in the direction of the right side of your chest or maybe towards the shoulder if that feels okay in your neck. We're taking a few breaths here. So again, as we breathe deeply, we're calming our nervous system, we're quieting our minds. But here, we're also improving the flexibility of our spines. And some say that the twisting postures can also help with our digestion. And then let 
hips untwist. So bringing the spine back to neutral, and then we'll take the twist to the other side. So left hand comes behind you, right hand to either one of your legs. And you could look in the direction of the side of your chest, the left side of your chest, or towards the shoulder. And taking a few breaths here. You could also, if it bothers your neck at all to be in this position, you could drop your chin down and really take your head and your neck out of the posture altogether. Just a few more breaths. Good, and then let's come back to center. Let's move now to our hands and our knees. So if you want to, you could take something and place under your knees just for a little extra padding and cushioning. And then resting your hands on the ground and your knees on whatever extra surface you've put here. So here, you might wanna bring your hands right under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. And uh, if it bothers your hands or your wrists to have the hands just like this, you could turn your fingers out a little bit. You could also come onto fists if you like. And then just look down at the ground so that you're not um, creating too much curvature uh, in the neck that could maybe feel uncomfortable. And from here, we'll move through what we would call a few cows and cats. So as you inhale, let your abdomen drop a little bit. You might feel your tailbone lift up and it might also feel like your heart is coming through your shoulders. And then as you exhale, you could round your back up and maybe you look at your own thighs to fully round the back. We could do this a few more times, inhaling, dropping the belly, feeling the spine curve. And then exhale, rounding. And a few more times, maybe three more times, in and out of each one of these postures. Maybe one more. And then coming back to a neutral spine. So from here, we're going to move through the right leg. So we'll find some steadiness here by really feeling into the hands and maybe drawing your navel in towards your spine for some stability in your core. And then we'll start by just taking the right leg out behind us with the foot still on the ground. You might press out through the heel just to lengthen through the back of the leg and then gently shift your weight forward, again, engaging the abdominal muscles. And as you inhale, you could lift your right leg out and up behind you. And as you exhale, bend the knee and draw it in towards your chest. We'll do that three more times. Inhale, stretch the leg out. And exhale, draw the knee in. Again, inhale, stretching the leg out. And exhale bringing it in. And one more time, inhale, stretch the leg out. And exhale, bring it in. From here, we'll inhale, stretch the right leg out and flex your foot. Continue to breathe here. And a couple of variations. One could be to keep your hands on the ground just like this. The other would be to reach forward with your left hand turning this into more of a balance pose. But also, it's a place where we can breathe deeply, where we can ride the wave of strong sensation. It's a way for us to uh, cultivate an ability to um, tolerate a little bit of stress in the body, or a lot of stress. Good, and then come back to tabletop. And then from here, sending your hips back to your heels. 
So we're coming into what we call child's pose. Now, if your head can easily touch the ground, that's great. If it doesn't, no worries, it doesn't have to. You might wanna turn the palms of your hands up just to bring a little ease into the wrists, maybe wiggle the fingers or open and close the hands or circle the wrists. This is a posture that is, it's considered a resting posture in yoga. Sometimes it feels restful, sometimes it doesn't. But it is a place where you can turn your attention inward, let, letting go of all of the distractions of the outer world, really paying attention to what's happening inside. And then coming back to tabletop, let's do the same thing with the left leg. So we're just gonna stretch the leg out with the foot on the ground to start with, press out through the heel to lengthen through the whole back of the leg. And then we'll shift our weight forward. So feeling some stability under the hands as you draw the navel in towards your spine. And on an inhale, lift the left leg up. As you exhale, bend and you draw it in towards your chest. Let's do that three more times. And then stretching the leg out one more time. Maybe you flex the foot. Keep both hands on the ground if you like, or this time you'd reach forward with your right hand. Take a few breaths. Again, really riding that wave of strong sensation created by this posture, using your breath to find internal balance. And then release and take the hips back to the heels. Take another child's pose. Good, and then come back to tabletop. So we're actually gonna um, do this entire practice on the floor, not even coming to a standing posture which can sometimes be really nice. Uh, just when maybe our energy isn't quite as high or we just want to have something that's a little bit more relaxing for us. So we're just gonna bump the feet to the side, swing the legs around, and you might take uh, whatever it is that you have under your knees and use it as a pillow now. Once you're on the ground, on your back, you might keep your knees bent and the feet on the floor. And let's just take a few long, deep breaths together. Inhaling deeply through the nose and exhaling even more fully through the mouth. So letting the exhale be a little longer than the inhale. About two more like that. And then coming back to your natural breath. So this idea of breathing deeply, moving in kind of fluid ways um, actually engages our vagus nerve. It's, so it's spelled vagus, V-A-G-U-S, not like Las Vegas, but it means wandering. Vega in uh, Latin is to wander. And so this is a wandering nerve that travels through our entire organism and it touches almost every internal organ and it's important because this is what helps us to regulate to be able to self-regulate regulating our emotions and our thoughts so i have a friend who likes to say that the breath is the boss all right so just using your breath whenever you're in a situation or you start to feel 
maybe a little triggered or you just feel tension in your body, think about breathing deep. And then as you're ready, you could lift your right leg up towards the sky. You could hold on to the leg if you like, or you could just uh, let the leg float in the air on its own. The knee could have a little bend in it, or it could be straight. Let's just take a few breaths here. Just draining the leg. And then go ahead and bend the right knee. Hug it in towards your chest. You can hold on to the knee or just below the knee with your hands, squeezing it in towards your chest. And then from here, uh, just letting the right leg drift out to the right, holding on to your knee with your right hand, cradling the knee here, supporting your leg to open up the hip and the inner thigh. And then bringing your knee back to center, let's take the right ankle and place it on top of the left leg in a figure four position. And then to open that inner thigh and the hip just a little bit more, you could take your right hand, maybe the palm of your hand or your fingertips, and just press into your inner thigh. So you're pressing your thigh away from you. And you might feel some sensation here. And this might feel like exactly the level of sensation or stretch that you want today. But if you wanna do something a little different, you could draw the left knee in towards your chest. So now both feet would be off the ground. And what I found to be helpful lately is to use both my hands, but to put one hand on my right knee and take the other hand, the left hand, and hold on to the outer edge of the left foot and just pull in here a little bit. That way you don't have to worry about clasping your hands behind your left thigh when where the shoulders might come up off the ground. You could just gently pull in. And taking a few more breaths, noticing where it is in your body that you're feeling sensation. So as we notice the things that are going on in our bodies, as we practice, we're creating a connection between our bodies and our minds. Yoga calls this mindfulness in the body. And uh, uh, brain science, neuroscience, calls it interoceptive awareness. Interoceptive awareness. They mean the same thing. And it's just feeling yourself from the inside out. And then go ahead and release, bringing both feet back to the ground. You might want to just lift your hips slightly off the ground and give them a tiny shake just to release any tension, just charge anything that you might be holding, and then let the hips come back down to the ground. And let's take the left leg up. And the same thing, you could hold on to the leg if you like, or your arms could be down by your sides or on your abdomen. Just let the leg float there. Focusing on your breath and on any sensations that you might be feeling. And then 
And when you're ready, you could bend the knee and hug it in towards your chest, maybe tucking your chin a little bit to lengthen through the back of the neck. Take a couple of breaths here. And then as you feel ready, you could let the left leg drift to the left a bit, cradling your knee and your left hand. Really let your arm do the work here. And then come back to center, placing the right ankle on top of your left leg now in the figure four. Using your left hand to press your inner thigh away from you. And then choosing to stay like this or bringing the right knee in. Perhaps you hold on to the left leg with both your hands, drawing the knees in closer. Breathing a little deeper. Posture, both feet to the ground. And from here, you could let your arms stretch out by your side. So taking up as much space as you want here. With the knees still bent, you could start to windshield wiper your legs from side to side. noticing what it feels like to move in this way, maybe noticing the places where you feel a bit of freedom. Maybe there are other places where you feel some constriction. Maybe there's some neutral spots as well. And then the next time your knees come over to the right, let them stay there. So we're just gonna drop into a reclining twist here. And feeling your shoulders on the ground. Your feet might be stacked, one on top of the other, or it might feel better to separate the feet, maybe bringing the left foot a bit behind the right foot. Letting the feet and the legs relax as much as they can. As you feel ready, letting the knees come back to center and drifting them over to the left and again settling into the posture. Feel free to move your legs around, arms around, getting yourself settled into a place that feels really comfortable for you. Noticing what's happening with your breath. And then from here, bringing the knees back up, we're going to rest in what we would call Shavasana now, which is typically the last posture of a yoga practice. So there are different ways that you can do this. If this feels good to have the feet on the ground and the knees pointing up, then stay there. 
If you prefer, you could stretch your legs out long, maybe separating the feet a little bit, letting the feet and ankles roll open. Your hands can be on your chest or belly or down by your sides. We'll be here for about five minutes or so. So if this doesn't feel comfortable, if laying on your back doesn't feel comfortable or relaxing for you, you could also lay on your side. You could come over and just rest on your side. You could even sit up. Just finding a way to uh, get really comfy for yourself. And so the beauty of Shavasana is that this is the time when um, you are absorbing all of the benefits of your practice on a cellular level. All you need to do, whether you're lying on your back or your side or sitting up, is just to be present to yourself. There's really nothing else that you have to do but breathe and be. Nowhere that you need to go. Nothing in particular that you need to do except for that. Breathe. As you're ready, you might start to deepen your breath again. Let your awareness come back into the space that you're occupying. Feel your body, the parts of your body that are resting on the ground. And you might start to bring some gentle movement back into your physical body in any way, moving in any way that feels good for you. You might stretch your arms overhead, you might rock your head from side to side, wiggle fingers and toes. When you're ready, you could hug your knees into your chest if you're laying on your back. Roll over onto your favorite side. And then in your own time, make your way back up to a comfortable upright position. So once you're sitting back up, um, we're just about ready to end our practice, but I just want to uh, take you through a couple of movements, actually just self-holds, compassionate self-holds that uh, can really help us to, you're probably feeling kind of calm now, but this can be very useful uh, anytime where you're feeling uh, a little bit um, stressed out or discombobulated. So you could start by just taking hold of your opposite wrists in front of you with your elbows bent. Just give your wrists a little squeeze. And then draw your hands up. Just slide them up to your elbows. Give your elbows a gentle squeeze. Slide your hands up to your shoulders as if you're just giving yourself a big hug. Squeeze your shoulders. And take an extra breath here. 
And then bring your hands under your arms. So just at the base of your armpits, and just hold your sides. Good, and then release your hands, just slide your hands down your sides and your thighs and just let your arms float out. And then let's either bring your hands together at your heart or rest them in your lap or somewhere on your legs. You might want to bow your head to your own heart as a way of showing gratitude. Gratitude to yourself for taking the time to do something good for you. For engaging in these ancient practices that help us to quiet our minds, stretch and strengthen our bodies, improve the capacity of our lungs, nurture our hearts and our spirits, and balance our nervous system. I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. I have, hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Be well. Uh, and as we say in yoga, the light in me sees and bows to that same light in you. Namaste.